Working off with the whole. You're gonna want clips, right? Yeah, yeah, I do. I don't want rattles. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, before Brian rips my car apart, I'll get the quick intro here. So, back on the daily today on little Airbus. Time for another OEM Plus upgrade. Last time we did the factory ST HIDs for better nighttime visibility, plus the looks if you want it for that. Today it's for something to make the car a little nicer in winter, and that is mirror swap. So there's a few versions of mirrors for these cars with signals or no signals, puddle lamps, no puddle lamps, or heat or no heat. These ones, given that this is a fairly base SE, are non-heated, which it's Canada. That should not be a feature. That should not be an option, but they are not heated. There's no symbol there. I've already had them ice up a few times. It's Definitely a pain, definitely a safety hazard. So these are going, and we're gonna be putting in a set of factory heated mirrors. Now, I know people are gonna ask, this is where it gets a bit complicated. Cars that have an actual key, the actual turn key, are most, if not all, pre-wired, and it's a plug and play swap. If you have intelligent access, the key fob that you have the push button ignition for, it's not plug and play, period. So if you have a car that has an actual key, this will apply to you. If you don't, this won't, I'm sorry, but <laughs> that's what this car is, and so that's what this guide is for. Now, the other thing to look out for is the mirrors are basically the same from pre-facelift to facelift. However, as we discovered when we were doing some research into this, Ford did change the connector as part of the facelift. We don't know why, but they did. So I'll get some shots as we pull it apart here. It's the same wiring, it's the same functions, it's the same mounting points even, but the actual connector was changed, so you will have to repin. Now, to help show this, we're actually gonna be doing that here because these are Mark III mirrors off a 12 to 14 pre-facelift car, and the car itself is, of course, a facelift. It's a 2015. So if you have a Mark III and you get Mark III heated mirrors, it plugs right in. If you have a Mark 3.5 and get 3.5 heated mirrors, again, it plugs right in. If you go from one to the other, vice versa, like we are, you do have to repin the connector. So we'll be showing that just to be thorough. If you are able to find the correct, I say correct mirrors for your car, ignore that, just plug them in and off you go. So that'll make our install a little bit more tedious, but still fairly straightforward procedure and otherwise it's just a matter of plugging these in bolting them on and that's it so let's get to it you can unplug the tweeter for me thank you all you right want me so to tweezer for you uh -huh. <laughs> All right, so the only interior trim you have to remove for this, which makes it pretty easy, is just the uh, tweeter cover and the tweeter itself. So a couple of clips, one connector for the tweeter, take that off and put it away. And then in here, you'll see the wiring. That's for the tweeter. Now, this is the one you'll want. This is the mirror wiring. And it was the green with brown stripe, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, that one there. Yeah, so... Again, for those of you who have the RKT cars, the cars with an actual key, most, if not all, should be pre-wired. What you want to do is check the plug here, and if you have this guy, the little uh, brown wire green stripe, if you have that one, you are pre-wired for heated mirrors. So, if you don't have that, then <laughs> obviously there's a bit more to this now. This is not a guide to add that in. If you don't, I'm sorry, but... We're going with, if you do have it, as I do, right there, that means the car is ready to accept them. And mine will be once we switch over this plug to the facelift plug. We'd have the choice of swapping the connector on the mirror side, but it'll be a little easier with the harness giving us some slack to do the male side on the car. So that's what we're gonna remove and replace with the pre-facelift connector. This right, is going to so be a pain in the butt. Angle's a little awkward here, but Brian's 
working on deepening that. So, <laughs> this may get a little confusing at times given all the switching between facelift, pre facelift, all the mentions of both, but we were discovering that the reason Ford updated the connectors with the facelift cars is they seem to have actually just used the Euro connectors as Brian recognized it from his European mirrors, whereas the pre-face lifts had a 10-pin connector. The face lifts and the Euro cars have a 12, so that's why Ford got rid of the 10 pins when they updated the cars. And, and if you hear the, the someone grinding and sighing, is not happy about that. Yeah, there's a reason for that. So, so again, yeah. I apologize if it's a bit confusing at times with all the mentions, but. If you have a 12 to 14 car and you use 12 to 14 mirrors, it plugs right in. Likewise, if you have a 15 to 18 car and use 15 to 18 mirrors, it plugs right in. In our case, I'm fitting 12 to 14 mirrors on a 15 to 18 car, and equally if you did the other way around, you would have to repin them. So, gives us an extra step here, but oh, it's not all that terrible. Just have to pop the wires out and then switch them over into the other connector to actually match the mirror. So, I put like music over this as a montage and exit go. out the swearing and grunting and groaning and everything else. Yeah. Okay. Did it clip back in again? Yep. Did you hear the click? Yeah. Do you need me to like hold it to keep tension on it? No. It just. I don't want to pull it all the way out, but. Probably get on too. Might have to, yeah. yeah. Just because. There we go. Can't clip back in if it's doing that. Also, <laughs> I do not have any deep painting tools, so thank you to Brian for bringing <laughs> something that works in this case. Yeah. Uh, and I won't. Never had to repaint anything before, but maybe it's worthwhile adding the tools to the collection. One, two, three, four. So, what's that? One, two. That one? Giving us a bit of a guide here to follow is when I got the mirrors, I also got the little end of wiring with them just so we could see exactly where the wiring had to go for the pre facelift mirrors. We could have pulled apart another car as reference in one of the other foci around here, but this makes it easy just to have it right at hand. So, what Brian is doing is deep pinning the car's original connector and one at a time switching the wires to the pre facelift mirror connector following the other one as a guide so he knows where they all go. Yeah. All right, so Brian has gone and repinned all this. Now, one thing we just discovered, which I should point out is, first off, I said it was the, I believe I'd said it was the green wire brown stripe. Technically, it's brown wire with a green stripe that you want to check for. There's actually two in here in different gauges, which we discovered, so it makes it a little more confusing. But anyway, I will have the wiring diagrams in the article to clarify all this because looking at a connector I realize is not the easiest thing in the world to understand but Brian has gone and uh, repinned this just have to put the cover back on once we know it's all good so this is now the pre facelift 12 to 14 male connector and then once I bolt on the matching pre facelift mirror you can see it's still original here this will plug in and everything should function so it's three T30 Torx bits to remove the mirrors on these cars. Pretty straightforward. I will do that now. Pop that off and we'll fit the new mirror and make sure this works. And then just to show you guys where the bolts are, these little guys, there's one right below the plug. That's the easiest. There's one here under the rubber seal. So you have to pull it back a little bit to access it. And then the third is under this rubber plug right here. So pop it out. There's the last one and the mirror comes right off. Okay. Mirror's off, there's no other real clips or anything, so just pull it off. Might take a little bit of wiggling to free it if it's not been off the car before, maybe a bit stiff, since it does go under the molding. But pull that straight off, and now take this unheated mirror, put it away somewhere. <laughs> I need a bigger workbench. And now it'll be time to pop on the heated one. Right, jumping ahead a little bit here. 
You'll notice from the little symbol that the new mirror is on. You just had the car running and it does seem to be heating up. Although the real test will be once it gets cold and snowy again, see if it stays clear. However, the mirror glass moves, the signal works, everything else is fine. So by process of illumination, that should also be fully functional now. What we're doing next is not only swapping the caps over to the correct silver ones from the car's original mirrors, we're also gonna be changing out the lenses for the signals just because these are a little weathered, they're kind of tired looking. The ones off my original mirrors, which are over there, are in perfect shape. So we're just gonna pop this out, put my original lens back in, and then put my original cap onto the new mirror as well. The only trick is, it seems this one's never been out before, so it's putting up a little bit of a fight. The clip is not cooperating with us. I swear I'm not going to start smashing things. Brian needs to lie down now. <laughs> A little trickier to do with one hand, but there we are. All right, so that's the passenger side heated mirror on and working. There's the repinned connector in place. The uh, Torx screws are back in. The plug is back in, so now I'll just pop on the tweeter and the cover, and that will be done. In case you were wondering about actually powering these, getting them to work, it's all run off of the same circuit and switch as the rear window defroster so once you turn that on and the rear window heats up the mirrors do too there's no switch to add nothing else on this end so as long as you have that one special little wire plug those in and they will work Imagine that it's not just one <laughs> yeah <laughs> brian's still fuming from <laughs> for using same colored wires for different functions in more than one case as we just found with the driver's side mirror <laughs> <laughs> looking at it closer but you'll see the driver's side mirror is off the car now that connector has already been repinned for the incoming heated mirror the one thing i wanted to quickly point out while we have these side by side is the passenger mirrors are identical facelift to pre-facelift there's no difference between them the driver's mirrors if you want to be fully accurate here they are different on the facelift cars let me see if i can get the light to catch it here the mirror bases on all passenger side mirrors and pre-facelift driver side mirrors are flat. They're smooth, there's no definition or anything to them. That's how they look. The driver side facelift mirrors and only the driver side facelift mirrors have this little ridge in them. I don't know the official reason. I assume it's for wind noise or something when the window's down, but if it has that, it's a facelift driver's mirror and only a facelift driver's mirror. So, Erebus will be losing this since it's going to a pre-facelift mirror now, but I just wanted to include that for the sake of completion, that there is that one little difference to the driver's side mirrors as part of the mid-cycle refresh on these cars. So, anyway, the original non-heated mirror is out. The new-to-the-car heated mirror will go in next and then just as we did with the other side we will switch over the turn signal lenses because my originals are in better shape and then of course fit the ingot silver caps so it all looks correct and then we'll be able to call this job done all right so the last clip you guys would have seen was filmed a little while ago but i finally have a chance today to wrap up this video and therefore this little project so the heated mirrors as you saw went in they do work they work just as they would had they been fitted from factory. On that, I still don't know why these aren't a standard feature, at least in Canada. But now, little Erebus here has them. They work amazingly well. Definitely better for visibility and safety and just plain old convenience. So I'm very happy. I hope the little tutorial here was helpful for you guys. Now again, I'm sorry that this does not cover the IA cars, only the RKT turnkey cars. As noted in the lower corner of the video a little while ago, we will have a bit more info on the blog for IA cars. But of course, not only is this not an intelligent access vehicle, I'm pretty sure all the IA cars in our group already have heated mirrors, so it's not like we even had a vehicle on which to perform the swap. So this is for the lower model guys. I hope it helped. It, as mentioned multiple times, could be significantly easier if you just get the matching mirrors and plug them in we intentionally did the slightly more difficult route because 
A, we could then show it, but also B, it is much easier to find pre-facelift cars at the junkyard and therefore get pre-facelift mirrors to use. So that's why we went that route, but as said, they are in, they work, it runs off the factory switch inside, so there's no extra steps in there to worry about, and now the car is just that much better for winter use. So that concludes this little project. We will have the full blog post up a couple of days after this video goes live if you want the wiring diagrams and more info on both the RKT swap and a bit on the IA cars. So you can head over and check that out. The link will be in the description. And that wraps up the exterior of the car, I think, at least for a while. As you may have just seen as the camera panned, I've been starting to pick away at some of the updates for the interior. There's much more to come there, so I don't know when that video is going to go live. Could be a little while. I'm not getting much time to work on it right now, but that will be posted as soon as it's done. And just as we wrap up today, I might as well touch on some other general updates. There are some parts on the way for the S15 currently, some more OEM replacement parts to carry on with the restoration side of this little project. And then, as some of you may have seen, depending on what focus Facebook groups and forums and things you're a part of, we are just now about to release, finally, the coin drawers we've come up with for the pre-facelift cars. So these take the place of the credit card slot in front of the shifter if you had it. Some higher model cars had self-park and other features there, but the cars with the credit card slot, this is now a replacement option for you. So a full slide-out drawer to store coins, keys, whatever you want instead of just a pair of credit cards. We've seen some awesome feedback so far just based on the little teaser posts we put up about these and I wanted to include these in the video today because they are just about to go live at the time of this filming. We're probably only less than a week away from having these available to purchase. So they're listed in the store now. You can check them out ahead of the full release. Same place you can get the SE emblems and various other little items we offer for these cars. So I'll have a link for that below as well. And I think that's a good place to end the video for today. So heated mirrors are in. This car as a daily driver, as a tool is much better than it was a year ago just with a few little updates and as you saw work will continue now to make it just a little bit more unique and a little bit more me. So that's it for today. Thank you all for watching as always and I hope the tutorial was helpful for those of you that want to put some heated mirrors in your own cars. Cool. Thank you very much and we will talk to you all later.